where an extra life will cost you a quarter. Here's your look at the new NECA Toys Alien vs. Predator Warrior Predator. Terror grips the city of San Andreas as it's overwhelmed by a mysterious outbreak of aliens. The cybernetically enhanced Major Dutch Schaefer and Lieutenant Lin Kawasawa of the U.S. CMC are surrounded by a swarm of xenomorph drones when a pair of unlikely ally predators appear and offer a temporary alliance. Now it's a battle to end them as human and predator join forces against an unending wave of deadly xenomorphs. The very first thing we'll do is figure out how tall the warrior predator is. And just putting it to the very top there. That's about right. Right there. There we go. I clocked it at about 8.1 inches. It's actually probably 8 inches in height in centimeters. Let's flip that right over. Flip upside down and all around. Centimeter wise you're looking at 20.5 centimeters in height. The figure is a repaint and essentially is coming from the same mold as the Jungle Hunter Predator that we've looked at before. Now, before you look at that and think, wait a minute, that's not the same figure. No, it's not. This is actually the original Alien versus, well, not the original Alien. This is the original Predator, Jungle Hunter Predator, that didn't have the additional articulation in the torso, in the legs as well. But just to kind of give you an idea, this is the only one I really had at my disposal at the moment. Essentially the exact same figure, just a re-coat of paint, a fresh coat of paint to give us the Warrior Predator from Alien vs. Predator. Being that it is also a repaint, it carries over many of the same similar accessories, but then it gets one extra accessory that normally doesn't make an appearance with a Predator figure. This is the Smart Gun, and if it does look somewhat familiar to you, it's because it was also included with the Vasquez that came included in the Alien line. Here's where the Predator and Alien sort of coexist, as what's the, as same as they did in the game, they also coexist when it comes to accessories. So it's pretty cool that we get ourselves a Smart Gun. Cast in only black plastic, but it is, however, painted, cell shaded, so to speak. As you can see, it's been given this slightly off gray, almost like a borderline grayish blue across both sides. And while it doesn't have all the other appendages, all the extra things that would connect to the waist harness that Vasquez would wield the smart gun, it's nice to include this for the Predator. As we also move on to consistent things, moving kind of away from what to, ah, uh, we get ourselves some additional accessories that are more, I guess, specific to the Predator this go around. We get ourselves the Plasma Caster shoulder mounted cannon that all Predators seem to have. Well, that's not 100% true. Some of the Predators don't include Plasma Casters. But the more traditional Predators, like Jungle Hunter, for example, does. And let me just show you what I'm doing here. There's a little tab right there. And there's a tab right there. The tab, the bottom tab, this one right down here, this one right here, slots into this groove. And then the other one slots right into the top. The easiest way I find to do it is tab the bottom one in first and then stretch this across once that's in place, and fit it into that groove. Sometimes you actually have to bring it forward and then even push it down to get the plasma caster in place. And once in place, it's a nice accompanying piece, sort of kind of fills it out and gives him that traditional predator look. There is some posability in it, the same posability that the other predators who have wielded a plasma caster also have the same posability too. There's a hinge right here, and then there's also a ball joint that attaches to the top of the cannon. It's kept very simple, and simple is really not bad at all. The details on it are just as faithful and uh, loyal as the original Predator Plasma Caster is, although now it's been given, again, that cell-shaded treatment. The darker gray now gets accented with some medium grays, and even the tips, the very ends of it, of this scaled part on the back of the caster, has also been given a very light white, almost like a light whitish gray. 
which carries also into its shoulder. Talk a lot about that in a second. Don't certainly want to sidetrack from its one other accessory, and that is the combi stick. The retractable spear that would be famous in the just as tried and true as the plasma caster. Predators always seem to come now with the retractable spear. The combi stick is once again relegated to very simple colors. A combination of three colors, in fact. Once again, it looks like it's been molded in what I could best describe it as almost like a very light coffee brown. And then details around the handle, around where it retracts out, have been given a slightly more warmer tone, warmer coloring of that. A little bit more of a reddish brown in there. And then it's got these little highlighted areas. The very tips of the spear have it. There's a few of these little dots kind of in the mid section of the combi stick and also onto the end there as well. Like I said, it, uh, it doesn't come with many accessories, only really three accessories in total. But again, it's all the accessories that you would expect to come included with the Predator. Now that being said, let's have a look at the figure because I really do like this figure. I know it does seem, well, it's really just the same figure as we've gotten before. Is there really much the wow factor anymore by this point? And the answer to that is yes. I'm a big advocate when it comes to the repaints of these figures. Making use of existing molds, that's all about what the company wants to do. Companies are all about trying to make use of existing molds as much as they can. They really want to get as much bang for their buck because really at the end of the day, these molds are expensive to produce. So if you can get more figures out of it, all the better, and all the better for collectors as well. I grew up religiously playing Alien vs. Predator. I also had a colleague, a friend of mine, that had it on a little portable gaming system in which I played it as well. He had like all his arcade memes on it, all these little memes, but these little arcade games that were all on there. And uh, I played them religiously reliving my childhood youth of, of playing these games when I was going to actual arcades, which is sort of sad, sad now that we don't have arcades, or what arcades we do have now are very, very far different than the arcades that at least I grew up with. So what am I getting at here? Well, we are looking at essentially a same mold as what we've seen before. There's not really much different about it, but where NECA once again delivers is a really great new paint job. The paint is best as I could describe it. I would almost say it's pastel. Very, very light, light colors. In fact, other than really the brown and the loincloth there, all of the colors on the Predator are a very soft pastel. The lighter shades of the tan now in its majority of its body is a very, very light, light shade of beige, almost like a cream color. Abdomen muscles, as well as detailings around the pectoral muscles, have now been airbrushed in in a darker brown. This also carries its way over into the arm area. Its simplicity is actually what I enjoy the most about this. The meshing and the spots that we would normally come to expect from the Predator bodies, now being stripped away and kind of kept to its basics, I kind of really like that look much more. It's Of course, it's not going to be my definitive Predator, but it's sort of like a nice off extension of existing Predator figures that we've already gotten in our collection. And that's the one big sell for me as to why I love the kind of cell shaded video game inspired, comic inspired, or in this case, arcade inspired characters. Once again, you're taking existing molds, but giving brand new coat of paint, this cell shaded paint is really where this figure does deliver quite well. Having a look at his mask, like again, like I said again, very, very simplistic. I like the very deliberate spirals of color, making no efforts to transition the colors or very gradually change one color to the other. No, it's very obviously lighter gray than a darker gray, and then almost like a bluish gray on top of that. This obvious shading of color, I think, is where this Predator does do so well. Again, you've got the darker colors very obviously separated from the color that's next to it. The darker areas of its eyes, even like the little laser scope at the top, are very kept, very much kept to their own color. Love the grays that are also into its armor. Carrying over the same color palette that we looked at with the plasma caster makes its way also into the shoulder area. Yes, we have to be very mindful of the tubes. 
I'm sure there has been several instances in which I've moved shoulders, for example, and when you move the arm too much, too stressed, you are adding stress to that little hose right there. You don't want that definitely breaking. So that's a little bit of an area that you want to be mindful of. This hose also here as well when you are bending the arm. Just to kind of be careful of where that sits, where that resides, making sure that doesn't get too tight and certainly doesn't make sure that it breaks in the process. If anybody is wondering, they have still kept the countdown. Unfortunately though, it's the one area that I kind of wish could have had a little bit of color. I certainly don't want a full full color of different various colors added in there, but at the very least, if they had just added a little bit of red in there, just the countdowns, which we so expect to see nowadays whenever we open up this panel. It's slightly disappointing that when you do open up this panel, you're not treated to that same sort of expectation. The same sort of color gets unfortunately just left off. But it's not something that I'm going to open up too frequently on this figure. Likely I'll just probably display him with the combi stick. I may even venture off to displaying it also with the smart gun, just because it's not something that you see too often with a Predator. As we move our way further down, he does have the retractable blades. That's something that's consistent with a lot of the Predator figures. The construction and the way that they produce this does vary sometimes from different Predators, but the basics, the most go-to means is just a sliding track in which you can see the very bright blades, no additional paint added there, slide back and forth onto. Again, you got the consistent colorings of the lighter, the darker grays here, and then making its way down to its feet. Very much still that light, light color cream, now accented with very sharp, very stark white nails down below there. The nails are a little prickly, but not something that you're going to be drawing blood to. The Predator certainly will be drawing enough blood for you. You don't have to be worrying about little spiky toenails to be doing that. Uh, by the way, also, the hands do not come with, of course, as we looked at with the accessories, doesn't come with any variations. You do have kind of a gripping hand, but it's the most awkward of hands. I never do really like these hands. They're so clapped shut that the clamp that they make the hands the shape of, it's really difficult to fit stuff into that. So I'm probably going to be putting the combi stick into this hand rather than this hand over here. Let's run through its posability, shall we? Anybody who is not new, anybody who has long-term, long-timed collected these Predator figures, sort of kind of know what to expect when it comes to these ones right here. The same tried and true sculpt will still be true to this Predator figure. His head rotates back and forth. It will unfortunately butt up against the side plasma caster sometimes when you're rotating the head too much. Not necessarily that way, but this way right here inadvertently you probably will pop the caster right off its shoulder so you just want to be careful of that the head also hinges up and down it really does sit on a ball joint so as much generosity as a ball joint can give you will be the same on the head here of the predator figure the arms rotate back and forth this one is not as much the issue it hinges out as well swivels at the bicep double hinge on the elbow making use of that new posability on these figures uh, it does have a swivel right where the gauntlet is, and he also has a swivel on the hand, hinges back and forth as well. This is sort of the same thing here. You can pretty much just regurgitate the same thing I just set here. For over here, you just got to be a little bit more careful because it's got those additional hoses right there and right there. Because this is a newer uh, body mold for the Predator, it does have the ball joint on the upper torso, and then it does have a ball joint on the lower torso. The legs split, they go forward, they go back. Unfortunately, the plating here, just the way that the figure's legs angle, it seems, you don't seem to get a full forward straight bend. When you are rotating the legs, often at times it seems like the leg kind of wants to bend outward, but it does move forward and back. It does have a swivel at the top part of the thigh. It does have a double hinge on the knee. And then it does have pose building the foot, i.e. the feet rotate all the way around hinging up and down, and an ankle pivot back and forth. Anybody looking at this figure will obviously get a strong sense of deja vu, but I think it's a good deja vu. I think Neca Toys generally does do a good deja vu. It's a sense that you're getting 
the exact same figure as what we've gotten before, but that fresh coat of paint, there's something refreshing I find about this Warrior Predator from the Alien vs. Predator lineup. In a look that seems slightly jarring, in final looks here, I've got the Predator wielding the smart gun, something that you would normally expect to see a Predator doing, but thanks to NECA for including it, I can include it and display it with the figure. Though this isn't probably going to be the way I'm going to display it, although it does seem like a fun idea because so many other Predator figures are wielding combi sticks or smart discs. Maybe giving this one a smart gun would be something unique and make it stand out from the crowd. You know, having collected enough of these Predator figures over the years, well, you, anyone who's watched this channel long enough, thank you for that, by the way, will know that I've covered a whole range. In fact, every time a new Predator figure comes out, I seem to want to pick it up and review it because... Even though there is some mold exhaustion, I'm sure a lot of collectors will look at this and think, well, it's just the same figure as we've gotten before with a fresh coat of paint. Ah, that's the charm when it comes to a lot of these re-releases from NECA Toys. They're not simply just taking the existing mold, adding some new accessories and calling it something new. It's this fresh coat of paint that gives it an otherwise refreshing look. I like the crisp, fresh nature of this Predator figure. Those are probably not the best ways to describe a Predator figure, just kind of thinking about that right now. But it's the best way to describe it here in Final Looks, that there's a refreshingness about it. It seems clean and bright and colorful, and some of the things that you wouldn't normally expect to get with the realistic color palettes that normal movie Predators would usually carry. By making these move, well, not making these movie tie-ins, but making these game tie-in figures or comic tie-in figures, NECA can entertain giving them brighter colors that you wouldn't normally expect to see. As a result, like I said, Warrior Predator, probably again not the best way to describe it, is refreshing in a bright, squeaky clean, just came out of the shower look. And I really oh so love it. Its bright colors is really make it what makes it stand out even though it's making use of an existing mold that I know I've already picked up a handful of times already. Some good news, though, if you are looking to pick this one up for yourself, my friends, you can currently find this. Yeah, I know. I'm calling you my friends. You can currently find these at your local comic book store. Price point here in Canada, I want to say I paid about $34 for it or about $34.99. So on average, it's the same price as what you normally expect to pay comic book store wise to these figures retail stores i think are a little bit less than that but either way if you're a fan of predator figures and grew up with the alien versus predator arcade game like i did i can only imagine how many quarters those quarters could have been saved for something else i'm sure i probably spent an incredible amount of quarters on this on this arcade classic today though we were having a look at the new neca toys alien versus predator warrior predator uh, if you guys haven't had a chance yet to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? Certainly, more videos will be coming soon to this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.